I'm David Platt, and I want to tell you about a new initiative in Radical called Urgent. David Platt, how much time do you have? <laughs> He's a very charismatic guy. If he was running for office, the first time you meet him, you feel like you want to vote for him like right away. When David Platt came to the church, I didn't know much about him. Well, at first, I really liked him. I mean, he was so personable. Very good at question deflection. He knows how to get you to respond emotionally to him. He gave Romans 8 word for word, and boy, it was impressive. The first sets of sermons had decent theological meat in them, but now he wouldn't get past a hermeneutics 101 class. Hey, how are you? Hey, David, David Platt, where are you going, David Platt? I think David Platt is weak. I think that David Platt is a coward. He is a false teacher. He is a wolf. Uh, he is a liar. We'd been lied to from the pulpit. We were lied to from David Platt. There's no doubt about it, he's in it for the money. He's a great actor. Blind spots. We all have them. David was teaching essentially CRT. And then I started thinking, am I part of the problem because I'm white? And I kept thinking, well, I must be misunderstanding because a pastor wouldn't say something wrong. Areas of our lives where we're deceived and we don't know it. Critical race theory preached from the pulpit. Critical race theory really kind of caused confusion for me. We have 106 different nations represented in McLean Bible Church. I've been there doing personal security work since 2012. I would take a bullet for anybody in that church, anybody. And you're gonna turn around and say, I'm inherently racist? It's difficult for me uh, sometimes not to just torch like all white people because in particularly white evangelicals and Christians. Mike Kelsey has been handpicked apparently by David to become the next lead pastor of McLean Bible Church. When David Platt took over the church, everything became very autocratic. Ministries were destroyed. They got rid of all of them. Nobody could give me assurances about support for the ministry. How is money being spent at this church and why are all these ministries being cut? I was seeing things that bothered me, that concerned me. They were out marching basically alongside Black Lives Matter. I want to, I want to be a part of disciples being made and churches being multiplied all over the place. Laura asked David Platt specifically if the church was affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention and he never answered the question. That was an easy question. Just imagine leading churches to multiply churches where we live and around the world. Our Constitution says we're not allowed to affiliate outside of being an independent Bible church. They just disregarded Article 1, Section 2. We will not affiliate with any denomination. We've got to make major changes in how we give. The thing about that article is it's immutable. I had written to the Board of Elders about many of these issues. Never got a response just like everybody else. We have a 20 plus million dollar budget. If we were actually giving the way God is calling us to give, our budget would easily be two, three times that as a church. Just dream of all we can do. So Abby wakes me up in the middle of the night and she shows me a screenshot on her phone of McLean Bible Church's Dun and Bradstreet profile, which says that they were doing business as an SBC church. My name is John Leonard. I work for a firm called Finance and Evaluation Experts Incorporated. When we first got involved, we thought that the financial commitment between McLean Bible and the Southern Baptist was approximately $300,000, which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but... $300,000 was not even a drop in the bucket. It turns out that it was 10 times that, maybe 20 times that. You mean I could have millions of dollars if I just asked for it? Can you explain how they explained why, you know, hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars were just yeah. going from one place to another? <laughs> yeah, Chuck said, there's money flowing in all directions. He was like, it's flowing everywhere. This is the kind of boldness there is. And all right, we're going to make disciples, we're going to multiply churches. So don't we want to be a part of that here? They were effectively using their own parishioner money to expand the Southern Baptist Convention. What if? You use that $10,000 now to support a church planner. Through these plantings, the Southern Baptist Convention was able to start pushing in tendrils into the McLean Bible Church's finances, leadership, and policies. The church had been the victim of a hostile takeover 
by the Southern Baptist Convention. July 4th, 2021, David went up into the pulpit and said, We have explained and have in writing from the SBC, we're not a member of the Southern Baptist Convention. David Platt, we know that's all a lie. I remember when the church sent that letter out to the congregation, seeing it, and thought it was an absolute joke. There's no way that guy wrote it. Uh, it had to be somebody internal from, from McLean that wrote it. And the discovery that actually turned out to be the case. From David Platt, it would be helpful if you could send a letter to our elders and copy me clarifying that NBC is included in the SBC church database purely for the sake of accounting purposes. It was drafted by David Platt, uh, the bullet points on what to say. I just felt cheated by them because, you know, they're lying. David Platt's proxies are running everything now in the church. And it seems like there was some work done to obscure the movement of money being bundled up through the McLean Bible Church to New City Network or any of these other auxiliary organizations. Sometimes coming back into the McLean Bible Church and then being cut back over to the Southern Baptist Conservatives of Virginia. I saw a Speaker's Bureau advertising David Platt. His fees are ten dollars to $20,000. One of the questions I asked was how much is in the budget for Radical? There wasn't anything for the $650,000 donation to Radical founded by David Platt. What that was for, we have no idea. Another one of those line items that just was never transparent to the congregation. How much rent is Radical paying to have offices in our building? There are too many large sums of money being floated through there. They were denying their own members access to the financial records, which reflected those transactions. Raised this issue publicly, they were getting dismissed from the church. What happened to all these members? How were they purged? This happened to tons of people. And I wondered why they're challenging so many others who had been likewise members. These were very solid men of God. And those people I respected a lot, and all of a sudden they'd be gone. I kind of have a long fuse, but when I read this email kicking people out of the church. And it was sent, by the way, after we'd all asked financial questions. David Platt had said there was a small group of people trying to take over the church. Everybody come out, let's have this uh, election. We won an election and then they redid the election. And I went into the church lobby to vote. The girl got on the phone with somebody. They said to us, somehow your account's been made inactive. She comes back and says, you're not a member. I said, excuse me, I've been a member since 1961. I am an active leader. These are longtime members. These are the leaders of Discovering the Word. Teaching first grade boys and girls. The apologetics ministry. Men's discipleship ministry. I volunteered with special needs adults. Preparing for marriage. The praise team. Adoption, foster care. My voice has just been taken away. It was just so vibrant. They destroyed our church. We were threatened from the pulpit. Nobody better stand up or make a motion or talk or do anything. The security guy told us to stay in our seats and not disrupt. At every door into the sanctuary was a county police officer. And it felt like we were in another country under another government. I had no idea what SBC was. I didn't know that that meant the end of any control. We tried to have meetings with David Platt. We were denied. Yeah, I mean, you guys can't even talk to me for five minutes? The founders of this church would be appalled my parents would be appalled, and my father would be sitting here in this chair instead of me. We had to bring a lawsuit against the church to get answers to the finances. In response to these lawsuits, the church spent over $1 million to prevent document disclosures and the release of financial records. Now I want to non-suit it, which means withdraw it, but have the right to take this information and go public with it, and that will be the victory in this case. It's an effort to speak the truth. Before David Platt is even pastor at McLean Bible Church, he is working behind the scenes to deceive our elder board. Can we trust our leaders anymore? These guys are really afraid to let the truth out. I've prayed so much about it and asked for the truth to come out, but I just can't even imagine what's behind it. There is something bigger at play going on. What are we hiding? Are they cooking the books? And you think, how, how did I miss something so obvious? This is just the beginning of the light being shown upon McLean Bible Church and David Platt. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. 
Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in your private room shall be proclaimed on the housetops. Outside this church, coordinated a divisive effort to use disinformation. That was a lot to take in. Let me say it again. A small group of people inside and outside this church coordinated a divisive effort to use disinformation.